Support for this podcast and the following message come from Money Mind from Prudential, a podcast powered by your financial behavior. Hear insights from financial psychologists, experts, and more. Download and subscribe to Money Mind wherever you find podcasts and learn more at slate.com slash money mind. Hey, if you need a great way to listen to Ask Me Another before summer really ends... It's NPR One. NPR One is an app for your phone, kind of like Pandora, but for public radio. And it's full of news and podcasts, including Ask Me Another. So whenever you're ready to listen, NPR One has something great just for you. Find it on your app store. It's NPR One. From NPR and WNYC, coming to you from the Bell House in beautiful Brooklyn, New York, It's NPR's hour of puzzles, word games, and trivia. Ask me another. I'm Jonathan Colton. Now here's your host, Ophira Eisenberg. Thank you, Jonathan. We have a great show for you. Four contestants are backstage reciting the Canterbury Tales in the original Middle English. Waiting to play our nerdy games, but only one will be our big winner. And our special guest is Natasha Leone, who you know from Orange is the New Black. And she's been in so many films, including cult favorites like But I'm a Cheerleader and Slums of Beverly Hills. You just don't get the kind of character in a mainstream movie like you do in a cult movie. I love, like, the creepy loner who collects doll heads the time traveler with a mysterious scar, the crazed former drug addict with an eye patch who always tells it like it is. Uh, And I realize that is also a list of uh, the guys I've dated. (laughs) Let's get things started with our first two contestants. First up, Brian Convery. You are joining us from Philadelphia, and you work for a medical publishing company. I do. Okay. So this is where you get doctors to write about stuff. Yes. I take it. Yes. Uh, like what? Like new, new technologies? N- yeah. Like new techniques, surgeries, things of that nature. Okay. So is there stuff on the medical horizon that we should be afraid of? Oh, everything. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. No, I have no idea. <laughs> wait, wait a second. Do you not, do you not read any of the stuff that you... No, it could... Who knows if it's true? <laughs> 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 we just publish it, you know? Yeah, right. <laughs> can't afford a fact no. checker. No. <laughs> Print is dying. We can't, we can't afford the money. <laughs> Your opponent is Graham Gaston. You are a freelance TV news producer. And you've said that you live in Williamsburg. <laughs> and you play in a softball league that makes life worth living in Williamsburg. Well, I mean, absolutely. I, I, I'm, uh, I'm not 22 anymore, and, and I don't have a handlebar mustache, and my bar- bike has more than, more than one gear. So <laughs> I have to find something in, in Williamsburg to make, it, uh, to make it okay to live up there. And what kind of uh, people are on your softball team? Oh, um, drinkers mostly. Drinkers, yeah. guys. <laughs> it's a beer league. So, Brian and Graham, the first of you who wins two of our games will move on to our final round at the end of the show. Are you ready to play? Yes. Yep. Very good. Let's go to our first game. Brian, what is the most exotic place you've ever traveled to? Canada. Canada? <laughs> exotic? Have you been? I'm from there. Oh, my God. It's like <laughs> another world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Graham, what's the most exotic place you've traveled to? Well, I've been to Hawaii. Hawaii, yeah. I, I mean, this makes you want to say Montreal, though. I mean, I, they speak French, and they're only four so hours let, away. Let's just, let's just make this clear. Both of you have not traveled. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the questions are tailored perfectly in a way that you cannot anticipate. All right, well, this is a trivia game called A Film Lover's Travel Guide. In this game, Jonathan and I will read you entries from a travel guide. All you have to do is figure out what city we're talking about. And it sounds easy enough, except this travel guide was written by someone who never left his home (laughs) (laughs) and only researched cities by watching movies set in them. All right. Buzz in to answer. Winner will be one step closer to our final round at the end of the show. Are you ready? You're going to have to draw upon all of your extensive traveling knowledge. (laughs) to do well in this game. Here we go. Start your day by stealing a garden gnome to take pictures of while dancing a fantasy ballet with the Gene Kelly and making ratatouille under a chef's hat. Brian. Uh, Paris. 
Paris, France. That is correct. Yeah. Did you know all of those references? No. I heard Ratatouille. <laughs> just Ratatouille? Yeah. Um, I can lie or I can just, you know. <laughs> no, I, I, Thanks for being honest. The truth is way better. The truth is way better. Uh, yeah, stealing a garden gnome. Did you, well, that was from Amelie, but did you know that uh, in France, that is where the Garden Gnome Liberation Front is? That's the headquarters. I'm serious. There's a Garden Gnome Liberation Front. It's a society where they steal garden gnomes and bring them back to the wild because they think that they are being, yeah, they're being basically jailed by being in people's gardens. Um, <laughs> when you say back to the wild, what do you mean? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Hop into the back seat with ex-cons Jake and Elwood Blues for a drive to this city where you can jump onto a parade float with Ferris Bueller. Don't worry if you get busted. Roxy Hart's defense team will get you off. Brian. Chicago. You got it. Drift your car through this city fast and furiously because you'll be trying to keep up with a sword-wielding bride slashing her way around the crazy 88s and a giant fire-breathing lizard. Brian. Los Angeles. Interesting. <laughs> Sorry, that is not what we were looking for. Graham, can you steal? It's Tokyo. It is Tokyo, that's right. Join the Globe's Spotlight Division and spend the day investigating whether Matt Damon is secretly an underworld mole or secretly a mathematical genius who needs to be told it's not his fault. Graham. Uh, Boston. Yep, that's right. Mm -hmm. We could have reduced that clue to Matt Damon. <laughs> <laughs> Fly down to the city with Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers and pas de deux with them around the City of God district, then help guide the Las Macaws, Blue, and Jewel on their journey to the Amazon. Wow. We, we've hit a, we've hit a hmm. moment. We've hit a moment. Uh, Graham. Uh, Rio. Rio de Janeiro. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> this is your last clue. Don't get vertigo when you go touring the city's old Spanish missions, or you might end up on the wrong side of a 44 Magnum hearing Harvey Milk ask you, do you want to be recruited? Well, do you, punk? Graham. San Francisco. San Francisco is correct. <laughs> Puzzle Guru Archung, how did our contestants do? They both did great, but congratulations, Graham. You're one step closer to the final round. Let's check in with our contestants. Graham, uh, what music do you like to take a bubble bath uh, while listening to? Uh, well, it, the, the best music for, for anything is Wu-Tang, so we, we <laughs> okay. have to, have to put, it, put on Wu-Tang. Exciting bubble bath. <laughs> Ryan, what's your bubble bath music of choice? Lawrence Welk. <laughs> I can see that. Yeah. No explanation needed. No? That's, I feel like that's your entire personality. No explanation needed. <laughs> All right, Brian Graham, you're about to play one of our favorite games called This, That, or The Other. The rules are simple. I'm going to give you the name of something, and you have to tell me which of three categories it belongs to. And your categories are culinary herbs, My Little Pony characters, <laughs> or songs by the Irish New Age singer and songwriter, Enya. <laughs> We're going to alternate back and forth. Uh, Graham, you won the last game, so if you win this, you're going to go right to the final round. Brian, you need to win this, or we'll replace your entire music collection with Enya songs. <laughs> Although, based on your Lawrence Welk thing, I believe that would be an upgrade. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Graham, we'll start with you. Angelica. My Little Pony character. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. Brian, can you steal? Enya song. I'm <laughs> sorry, that is incorrect. <laughs> It's a culinary herb, Angelica. I mean. It's an oil that is used in liqueurs and perfumes uh, grown in Iceland, often grouped with Eliza and Peggy herbs. <laughs> Brian, Orinoco Flow. Enya. That is an Enya song, yes. <laughs> it's the one that goes sail away, sail away, sail away. <laughs> Why didn't she name it sail away, sail away, sail away? <laughs> Graham, Caribbean Blue. That is a spice. Caribbean blue. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. Brian, Caribbean blue. Uh, 
My Little Pony character. <laughs> I'm sorry, no. <sighs> Caribbean Blue is an Enya song. Brian, next one, Fluttershy. <laughs> My Little Pony character. <laughs> My Little Pony is correct. <laughs> Fluttershy takes good care of the animals in Ponyville. Most of them ponies, yeah, not all of them. I guess that, that's where they ran out of the creative names, didn't yeah. they? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Graham, Twilight Sparkle. My Little Pony. I'm sorry, that is a culinary herb. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. Uh, Twilight Sparkle is My Little Pony character who is a princess who believes that education is magic. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, Sweet Sicily. Culinary herb. Culinary herb is correct, yes. All right, these are your last clues. Graham, Wild Child. Uh, Enya song. Yeah, that's an Enya song, yeah. All right, Brian, Amarantine. Culinary herb. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. Graham, can you steal Amarantine? Enya song. Enya song is correct, yes. That's right. All right, let's go to our puzzle guru, Archung. How did our contestants do in that very intense game? We have a tie. Whoa! So hands on your buzzers. Tell me, is it an Enya song, an herb, or a My Little Pony character? Your clue is tarragon. <laughs> Brian. Culinary herb. You're correct. <laughs> that means you've each won a game apiece, and we're going to go to a tiebreaker round. I'm going to give you a category, and you're going to go back and forth naming things that fall in that category. The first contestant to mess up, either by guessing incorrectly, repeating an answer, or taking too long to answer, will be eliminated. You're going to buzz in to answer first. Here's your category. In 2015, the cities with the 10 busiest airports in the United States by number of passengers. Brian, you're first. Los Angeles. That is correct. Graham. Chicago. Correct. Brian. New York. That's right. Graham. Atlanta. That's right. Back to Brian. Las Vegas. That is true. Go back to Graham. Seattle. No, I'm sorry. That is incorrect. <laughs> the other ones are Charlotte, Dallas, Denver, Phoenix, and San Francisco. Oh, there you go. That means we have to say goodbye to Graham. Congratulations, Brian. You're moving on to the final round. <laughs> We'll find out who will face off against Brian in our final round at the end of the show. And coming up, we'll parody the music of James Bond. Plus, Jonathan and I will meet our own international man of mystery as the gamies become the gamers. I'm Ophira Eisenberg, and you're listening to Ask Me Another from NPR. <laughs> Support for this podcast and the following message comes from iTunes Movies with the Sundance hit Hunt for the Wilder People. Raised on hip-hop and foster care, defiant city kid Ricky Baker gets a fresh start in the New Zealand countryside. When a tragedy strikes that threatens to put Ricky back in the system, he and his foster father go on the run in the wilderness. A national manhunt ensues, and the newly branded outlaws must put aside their differences to survive as a family. Hunt for the Wilder People, available to own exclusively on iTunes Movies, September 13th. Hey, Sam Sanders here from the NPR Politics Podcast. Mark your calendar. Monday, September 26th is the very first presidential debate. And the next morning, we are inviting you to skip the cable news hangover and get caught up with us. We'll have new podcast episodes the morning after every single debate. So you'll know what happened and what it means by the time you get to work or class or finish walking the dog. Whatever your morning routine, make us a part of it. The NPR Politics Podcast. Subscribe or listen on the NPR One app. All right, back to the show. This is Ask Me Another, NPR's hour of puzzles, word games, and trivia. I'm Jonathan Colton, here with puzzle guru Art Chung, and now here's your host, Ophira Eisenberg. Thank you, Jonathan. Before the break, our contestant Brian won his way to the final round at the end of the show, and we'll find out who he'll face off against a little later. But first, it's time for a game we call Mystery Guest. A stranger is about to come on stage. 
Jonathan and I have no idea who this person is, but our puzzle guru, our Chung, does. That's right. You and Jonathan will have to ask yes or no questions to figure out our mystery guest's secret. Mystery guest, please introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Tim, and I am opening a business in New York later this year. Your job is to figure out what Tim's business is. Wow. All right, Tim. Does your business involve drinking or eating? Yes. Is the business that you're opening involved in serving food or drink to the public? Yes, it is. Well, but you hesitated you in a hesitated weird way. hesitated as if that it's not so exclusively weird. involved with that. Is your business going to be a secret? I, I, hope, I hope not. No. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, yeah, that's smart. Smart. Uh, is your business primarily about serving food and drink to the public? I would have to say no. Weird. Have I been to other businesses like yours in New York before? I have no idea what you've done in your life before. <laughs> yeah, so I, don't, I don't know how to answer that. Objection right. calls for sure. speculation. Got it, got it. Uh, does your business involve massage? No, not, no. Weird hesitation again. <laughs> don't, don't read too much into okay. that. It's not primarily about food and drink, but it does involve food and drink. Is it a Dave and Buster's? Ah, oh, no, it's I not wish. A Dave and Buster's. <laughs> I would be smart to open a Dave and Buster's. Yeah, your, your idea is not going to work. That's my prediction. Are you setting up a roller coaster in Times Square? <laughs> These are all wonderful business ideas, but no, that's uh, no. Do you get to ride a camel while eating? Because <laughs> I did that in Cleveland. I'll say, I'll say no to that. <laughs> okay. Is this, a, is this a, 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 an amusement business of some kind? Do people go there to be entertained and enjoy yeah. themselves? Yes. That Absolutely. Sounds, that sounds very nice. Right. So it's something kind of cool, like you get to watch a movie, but you also get like full meal service or something like that. Ding, 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 ding. Yes. What? Really? <laughs> a lot, a Wait, lot it, like that. Like Alamo Draft House? Uh, yes. Matter of fact, is that what it is? That's my business. Yeah! <laughs> wow. You cut to the chase. Wow! What is? <laughs> so let me let me let me introduce Tim okay, formally. Sorry. This is Tim League, the founder of Alamo Draft House. Yeah. Uh -huh. Which uh, I mean, how many cities uh, are, do you have Alamo Draft House cinemas in? I I don't know. I had a couple <laughs> of beers. Uh, so uh, probably uh, we have a, an, in eleven cities across right. the country. And you're opening a big one in Brooklyn this year, hopefully. I man, I really hope so. We're ready to go. We're ready to open. It's just uh, you know, I'm just a small town country boy. I don't understand these big city ways. But <laughs> wait a second, where where are you from? I, I'm from Austin, Texas. You're from Austin, Texas, right? <laughs> right, right. That's where it all started. And before he went into the movie business, Tim, you were an engineer. Yes, I was a mechanical engineer. I worked for Shell Oil for a couple of years. Um, I'm sorry. I mean, I, I, I yeah. quit. I quit. I quit. Yeah, I didn't like it. And so uh, on my way to work, when I was 23 years old, I saw a for lease sign on a movie theater. And I said, I'm, that's what I'm going to do. And uh, I, I did. And this is a move of like a really stupid and arrogant 23-year-old. And eventually it all sort of worked out. You started this when you were 23? Yeah. That's amazing, Tim. Thank you. You guys were looking bad in the beginning, but uh, yeah. you kind of brought it together at the end. I know. <laughs> so, he... free pass, right? <laughs> free membership? I still think you should open a Dave & Buster's. I think. <laughs> uh, we look forward to visiting you in Brooklyn. Thank you so much for our mystery guest, the CEO of Thank the you. Alamo Draft House, yes. Tim Lee. Let's meet our next two contestants. First up, Stephanie Golis. You are joining us from Boston. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where you work as an elementary school library teacher and you enjoy stereotypical librarian hobbies. I do. What are stereotypical librarian hobbies exactly? I knit, I crochet, I read books, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. That's good. What are you knitting, crocheting? Like, are you doing like... Clothing, well, I have, blankets. I have a new nephew, so I am making a hat for him right now. Nice. How's it going? It's uh, in the beginning stages, <laughs> okay, as, good. It, as it has been for the last two months. So Very well, good. Summer's very good. a tough knitting time. So. Right, because you don't just sit in. There's too many other things to do. There's too many things to do. See, you yeah. do a lot of non-librarian hobbies, too, well, I take like it. Gardening and, <laughs> <laughs> and reading outside. Reading outside. <laughs> 
Your opponent is Julia Leffler. You are a project manager for a TV streaming app, but you started in a totally different career. You were a water ballerina. <laughs> well, not professionally. I mean, I'm no Michael Phelps. So did you compete at all? I didn't compete, but I did exhibitions. I did shows. You did shows? Yeah. Okay, so how do you train for uh, a water ballet show? It's actually pretty intense. Uh, we would get up at 6 in the morning, and our coach would throw us into the water, and you had to uh, <laughs> tread water for like three minutes and then swim lengths of the pool. You need to work on your lung strength to be underwater for so long. Right. Yeah. yeah, so I always feel bad for like, because sometimes they're like, oh, and it opens to a flower, but half the girls are like down in the, yeah, you just see the, right? You hope you're the middle of the flower. You hope you're the middle of the flower, right. Did you get to be the middle of the flower? No. <laughs> All right, remember Stephanie and Julia, the first of you who wins two of our games was going to move on to our final round at the end of the show. So let's go to your first game. Your first game is a very dashing, debonair music parody game called Something, James Something. We rewrote James Bond movie themes to be about other famous people named James. <laughs> and I would like for you to answer the way James Bond would. So if I sing about the author of Finnegan's Wake, you will answer... Joyce. James Joyce. <laughs> so buzz in when you know who I'm singing about. If you get the person correct, you will get the chance for a bonus point by identifying the Bond theme. The winner will be one step closer to moving on to the final round at the end of the show. Are you ready? Ready. Okay, here we go. When he was young and a rebel without a car this actor played mixed up young man You know it did, you know it did, you know it did He starred in Giant, he made East of Eden But he drove much too fast <laughs> Died in a crash Stephanie James Dean I meant, oh shoot Yes, but you would answer Dean, James Dean That's correct <laughs> And for the bonus point, what movie is that from? Uh, Live or Let Die. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, don't, I have to go to the judge on this one. Are we going to allow it? Yeah, I think so. It's right. a conjunction problem. It's Live and Let Die. <laughs> I've seen zero James Bond movies. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, you got the bonus point. <laughs> you only live one. That's why this guy does everything Acting, directing, going to school This Spring Breakers star Even hosted the Oscars once The only time he didn't look cool Julia Franco James Franco. That's right. <laughs> Do you know the name of the movie? Is that you Only Died Twice? I have also not seen very many James Bond movies. <laughs> no, I don't think, I don't think we can... Uh, no, that one, you get a one, one chance to clarify that. That's not quite correct. You Only Live Twice? Yeah! <laughs> one or the other. <laughs> Hear this guy sing, oh so mellow He was married once to Carly Simon Fire and rain, your smiling face This guy wrote them cause he's good at rhyming Who's this guy? Stephanie Taylor, James Taylor Oh yeah, that's right and for the bonus point, what movie is that from? Oh, you don't know. You don't know the answer. <laughs> what is it, everybody? Skyfall. Skyfall, that's right. Adele wrote that. I Skyfall. knew it was Adele, but I had no, no idea. Soul singer. He's the man called Soul Brother number one. Sang, please, please, please. Such a bold singer. 
He did songs like Sex Machine and Cold Sweat Often on his knees Julia Brown, James Brown You got it And that was Goldfinger That was Goldfinger for the bonus point In the original lyrics, they rhyme Goldfinger with Coldfinger <laughs> That's the, that's the line halfway through the first verse. Such a cold finger. She's like, what is that? What happened? He's got a cold finger? Is that such a huge problem? I know. Put a mitten on it. I yeah. don't know. Poor circulation. That's I his guess. downfall. Have it looked at. If it's just the one finger, have it checked out. Something's not right. He does meticulous research. He interviews stars of the screen. That actor's studio guy The man with the index cards How resolutely does he search He knows every fact, every scene Julia I, I want to say Corden, James Corden I'm sorry, that is incorrect He does research very well That's, that's <laughs> That could be true about many people <laughs> I like that you're like, I'm going to sell my answer. <laughs> Maybe you'll change your mind. Not, that's not who we were looking for. Let me put it that way. Stephanie, do you know the answer? I can see his face because on, on Arrested Development. <laughs> it's wrong. Carville, can, James Carville. No, sorry, that is, that is incorrect. Who knows the answer? <laughs> Lipton, James Lipton is what we're looking for from, from Actors Studio. It was the man with the golden gun. Was that one. All right, this is your last clue. From England with love He comes to us He follows Colbert on CBS A late, late night host Who proved he had the goods in into the woods. Stephanie. Corden. James Corden. James <laughs> Corden, that's right. Oh, Boy, spoiler alert, uh, yeah. Julia. Uh, Stephanie, do you know the name of the movie or song? I think I do. From Russia with Love. Yeah, you got it. You got the bonus point. Our Chung, how did our contestants do? What a tough game. Congratulations, Stephanie. You're one step closer to the final round. All right, well, let's get to your next game. Strap in, everybody, because it's time for Anagrams on the Radio. <laughs> Stephanie Golis, your name anagrams to Nostalgia Sheep. Are you, in fact, nostalgic for sheep? It's interesting that that's the way it worked out, because I just got back from Iceland, and <laughs> Iceland is sheep crazy. There are sheep everywhere. Julia Leffler, your name anagrams to Fulfill a Jeer. Why must you jeer so much? Well, I am a native New Yorker. Right. It's just so, in your soul. Yeah, it comes with the territory. <laughs> Excellent. So this word game is called Mr. Mojo Ryzen because we decided to inject a little rock and roll into our anagram game by adding the most famous anagrammed name in rock, Mr. Mojo Ryzen, the anagram for the Doors lead singer, Jim Morrison, that he gave himself. So pay particular attention to the end of each clue because the answer we're looking for is an anagram of the last word you hear. So let's go to our puzzle guru, Art Chung, for an example. So if we said, in the title of Mr. Mojo Ryzen's favorite Dumas novel, how many musketeers are there? You would say three, which is an anagram of the word there. All right, so Stephanie, you won the last game. You, if you win this, you're right into the final round. Julia, you need to win this game, or we'll be wishing you body ego. That's an anagram of goodbye. <laughs> okay. All right. After a long day in the studio, Mr. Mojo Ryzen relaxes with some Darjeeling, oolong, and other drinks from the East. Julia. Teas. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Mr. Mojo Ryzen's car manufacturer of choice is this electric car maker with the Model 3 on its production slate. 
Stephanie. Tesla. That is correct. Mr. Mojo Rising is wondering, what device can I use to switch my TV to a movie where the Earth gets destroyed by a massive meteor? Julia. Remote. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Mojo Ryzen should have paid more attention in art class. He forgot who made the impressionist painting La Classe de Danse. Egads! <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie. Dega. Yes. <laughs> we don't hear enough egads these days, do we? I feel like we do. <laughs> That was it? That was enough? enough. <laughs> if you want to see the Lizard King's self-portraits, this is where Mr. Mojo Ryzen's art is shown. Largely. Puzzle Art Chun? It's where art is shown. <laughs> Largely. Stephanie? Gallery. Gallery is correct. <laughs> this is your last clue. Mr. Mojo Ryzen loves to go here completely naked, except for his ski poles. Julia? The slopes. Well, poles. Slope. Slope, yes. There we go. Slope is correct. Well done, Julia. All right. Puzziger Archung, how did our contestants do? We have another tie. Oh, my God. All right. Hands on your buzzers. Here's your tiebreaker. Mr. Mojo Ryzen knows his ankle is in this position relative to his elbow. Julia. Below. That is correct. Congratulations. Oh my God. You've tied it up at one game apiece, so it's time for the tiebreaker round. I'm going to give you a category, and you'll go back and forth, naming things that fall in the category. Your category is, from 2000 to 2015, People Magazine's Sexiest Man Alive. <laughs> Julia, you're first up. Johnny Depp. That is correct. Twice, in fact. <laughs> Stephanie, your turn. Chris Hemsworth. That is correct. In 2014. Julia. Um, Christian Bale. No, I'm sorry. He's not on the list. Congratulations, Stephanie. You're moving on to the final round. Wow. All right. It's settled. Our finalists are Brian and Stephanie. They are going to face off in our final round at the end of the show. And Ask Me Another is hitting the road. We'll be in Dallas at the Majestic Theater on September 27th. That's right. We'll be deep in the heart of puzzle country. More information at amatickets.org. Coming up, our special guest, Natasha Leone, goes from the big house to some random houses owned by literary bigwigs. I'm Ophira Eisberg, and you're listening to Ask Me Another from NPR. Let's take a moment to thank and share a message from our sponsor, LearnVest. LearnVest is an online financial advice company focused on empowering people nationwide to make smart decisions with their money. If you want to know how aggressively to pay down your student loans, LearnVest can help with that. If you want to know how much you should put aside for saving, they can do that too. Or how much you should contribute to your retirement account. Yep, they're on it. They'll create a custom financial plan to answer those questions. Plus, they'll pair you with a financial planner to help you keep on track. To see a sample plan and get a $50 credit, go to learnvest.com slash another. Here's another shout out to one of our sponsors who brings you this message, Casper, an online mattress retailer. The Casper mattress is designed and developed in the USA and engineered for comfort. They use two technologies, latex foam and memory foam, to give just the right amount of sink and bounce, and they have a risk-free trial. Try out your Casper mattress for 100 nights with free delivery and returns, along with a special offer for listeners. Go to casper.com slash another and use the promo code another to redeem $50 towards a Casper mattress. Terms and conditions apply. This is NPR's Ask Me Another. I'm Jonathan Colton, here with puzzle guru Art Chung. And now here's your host, Ophira Eisenberg. <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. Soon we'll find out which one of our contestants, Brian or Stephanie, will be today's big winner. But first, it's time to welcome our special guest. You know her as Nikki Nichols from Orange is the New Black, and she is in three new movies, Anti-Birth, The Intervention, and Yoga Hosers. We can't believe she found time to be on our show. Please welcome Natasha Leone. Yeah. 
Thank you. Hello. Welcome, Natasha. Thanks very much. We're obviously very psyched to have you. I'm thrilled to leave the house. <laughs> You've been leaving the house constantly. Three movies coming out at yeah. the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you have said yourself that you have done your share of bizarre projects. Uh-huh. Uh, is there any in your vast filmography that stands out as the most Oh, I bizarre? think this anti-birth is about to take the cake. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a uh, very, very strange picture. And this is me promoting it. Uh, <laughs> I, it is one of the weirder movies I've ever seen, I've been involved in. The premise is that you are a, a party girl and you go out on like kind of an insane First of all, bender. I feel like party girl is a complex term okay. in our times. Because to me, you say party girl, I picture somebody who's like uh, with a real will to live, <laughs> right. dancing on a table, right. lost, glitter, Partying. spray tan, what have you. Mm-hmm. You know, I just picture like, yeah, like somebody who's like, yeah, we're going to party or whatever, which is not what this person is. This is like a real self-destructive, living in the middle of nowhere, nihilistic, like um, no reason to go on (laughs) kind of a party animal. Party girl. (laughs) You know, and less party, more just an animal. Right, right. But still, it's very funny. (laughs) Right. And it's a great time. Okay, so the character yeah, uses Lou. Uh, drugs. Lou has, uses drugs, alcohol, and going out at night for yeah. uh, to hide the pain. Not even. I mean, I don't think it's a secret. I don't think there's a lot of hiding okay. happening in Lou's life. I think she's pretty much just walking around. Yeah, what is she doing? Cleaning uh, the motel room. She finds pizza, eats the pizza. <laughs> Maybe there's a cigarette butt in the pizza. She's like, oh, look, uh, half a cigarette. Uh, <laughs> she, that's what she's up to. Okay. When and, we meet her. And then one night, she kind of doesn't remember how yeah, yeah, extreme yeah, yeah, yeah. the night went. Yeah, 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 yeah. And is, becomes pregnant with a demon. It is. It's sort of like if um, it was uh, Sam Kinison instead of Mia Farrow and Rosemary's Baby is what ends up happening. <laughs> and, uh, right. But with all the same sort of sensitivities, you know what I mean? But it's true. People have described the premise as being similar to Rosemary's Baby, but completely different because your character, Lou, is not willowy Mia Farrow leaning on her husband and freaking yeah. out. She's, like, strong and... Uh... Yeah, like Rodney Dangerfield-esque. <laughs> and, like, trying to figure it out. I, I really am a big fan of the movie. It's not a perfect movie, but it's definitely the kind of movie that I believe in. But just to be clear, Anti-Birth is premiering on the same day. Uh-huh. As Yoga Hosers, yeah. which is a Kevin Smith comedy uh, yeah. horror film about two girls who That's are... That's my genre. <laughs> yeah, clearly. Just uh, and they're fighting Canadian Nazis in the shape of sausages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, if you're going to see both, should you do Yoga Hosers first and Anti-Birth Section? Or... Excellent question. I yeah. uh, had not thought about it. Um, what time? What time is the day starting? Let's say you're starting at 2 p.m. 2, 2. Yeah. Uh, do you think you're going to need an afternoon nap? Probably. probably. Yeah, because probably. Here's my only concern about seeing Auntie Birth second is that, like, I feel like if you decide to take, like, a midday nap, then you're like, I don't want to leave the house again. Good point. Good point. Right? All right. So- I mean, I feel like usually I like to leave the house once. <laughs> and I like a, a day-to-night get-up, uh, a sensible shoe. <laughs> I always carry a spare pair of panties. Smart. Sunglasses and prescription glasses. Right. And uh, Nicorette and cigarettes. Uh, lighter, backup lighter. <laughs> Metro card, $20. Amex, Visa, ID. And so I would suggest, you know, that sort of a strategy for the day. Um, that is like a travel guide right there, yeah, by yeah. the way. So even though you're doing this, like, over-the-top, like, horror film, are you constantly aware of sort of the political implications of doing these kind of strong female roles that are almost, like, right now we're seeing more of them, but they used to be rarely seen? Um, I appreciate the compliment. Um, I wish a lot of the movies were better, is maybe what I'm saying. Um, (laughs) Like, I think that maybe certainly their intent... Sure. Uh, had its heart in the right place often. Like, Slums of Beverly Hills is like a great movie that's a great movie that's a great movie. I wish they were all Slums of Beverly Hills, but they're not. You know, it's hard to make a great movie. So, uh, anyway, I feel like that uh, I'd be better uh, suited to fit that description if I'd made, you know, like 19 of those. Um, <laughs> but I guess certain things just, like, don't appeal to me, but also uh, I don't appeal to them. Like, it's a mutual thing that's not even on purpose um right so then you find the right fit and yeah and and i just think i mean like certainly in the case of uh this movie uh the intervention right uh, with clea duvall yeah that clea duvall um 
You right, know, female uh, director and writer. Well, but she's also like an actor who was like, you know, like most of us are kind of, you know, I mean, there's like five movie stars and then the rest of us are kind of these like character actors that sometimes, you know, have a moment or something like, thanks, Orange is the New Black. I'm like having another 15 minutes and I'm very grateful. Uh, but uh, Yeah, the intervention deal. is a, a group of uh, friends who come together, couples, and they are giving one couple an intervention uh, about their marriage that yeah. they should break up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that a real thing? Do those kind of interventions happen? Yeah, I mean, more and more all the time. <laughs> you know, I was at an event a, a couple of years ago in San Francisco where they screened, couldn't believe it, 1999 film, but I'm a cheerleader, mm -hmm. uh, for a huge audience there. It's about an all-American cheerleader who is sent to a kind of rehab camp because her parents and friends suspect that she is a lesbian. And in 1999... It was received in one way. I mean, I watched it a couple of years ago with a huge crowd, and I feel like it's received a totally different way. Have you yeah. sort of experienced the growth of yeah, its I had audience? That, um, yeah, I mean, it just it really holds up. It's just got so much uh, heart, that movie. And it, at the time, just sort of, you know, off but special. You know, you said that her parents want to send her to um, this quote-unquote homo rehab, as they say in the movie. And, and I mean, what's so interesting uh, is that she doesn't want to go because she doesn't think she's gay. Right. She has no idea what they're talking about. And in many ways, it occurs to me now that that's sort of a lot of what's changed. It's like, speaks to that being such a different time that like, would Megan in, you know, but I'm a cheerleader 2016, she would, you know, sort of probably be aware that she was gay if she was, you know, like 17 and in high school. Remember like the Sarah McLaughlin and like the girls, the models <laughs> in her locker and just like ogling like Michelle Williams and... <laughs> really like into the ladies you know <laughs> and has no self-awareness about it because it's like feels like such a outer space idea that she could possibly be gay so i mean i think that's uh, very good news it, it is good news yeah. yeah in a recent article i read that you're not only an avid reader but you demand to read the longest thickest most intimidating books out there what do you mean thomas pynchon <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, because right. really, against the day is, I think, like the only giant book I've read. These days, though, what am I reading? Twitter. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. I mean, let's be honest. But yeah, once upon a time, I was a big time reader. That's tragic. <laughs> and mean... uh, you dropped out of NYU and used the tuition money to buy an apartment yeah, yeah, yeah. in New York City when you were eighteen, nineteen? No, more like uh, seventeen. Probably. Seventeen. Yeah. So how does a 17-year-old buy an apartment in New York City? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Shady attorneys. Really? Dot com. Um, <laughs> Dot com. <laughs> the only school I applied to was Tisch. I was like, I'm going to be a film and philosophy double major. You know, I'll like think about some things, write them down, make movies. That was my plan. <laughs> and then what happened is I was like reading the Times. And then uh, I saw it was like Gramercy adjacent studio. And even 17-year-old me knew, I was like, look, kid, I had to say to myself, I was like, this is a knockout deal. <laughs> this is a once-in-a-lifetime deal. You want to go to, what do you want to do? You want to go to NYU, sit with a bunch of kids, watch Apocalypse Now, pay 60 grand a semester? What do you want to do here? Or, right? So, or uh, buy an apartment in Gramercy Park. Yeah, so I, adjacent. So, adjacent. Uh, that was it, the full kahuna. I put into the apartment, bought the apartment, you know, and uh, dropped out of school. Yeah. Uh, Natasha, are you ready for an Ask Me Another Challenge? Yes. All right. Natasha Leone, everybody. <laughs> Natasha, we read that you lived in a house that Herman Melville once lived in. Is that true? Yes, it's true. Google it. Maybe my parents were lying. But anyway, that's what they told me. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh? Okay, so in your game, Jonathan and I will read descriptions of real authors' homes, and all you have to do is guess whose home we are talking about. Very good. And if you get enough right, Sydney Malatesta from Cincinnati, Ohio, will win and ask me another Rubik's Cube. Okay. Uh, and if you need a, a hint, our puzzle girl, Art Chung, is standing by. Okay. You won't find a Juliet balcony on this simple house built in the 1500s in Stratford-upon-Avon, where all the world's a stage. Okay. Okay, so if it's not Shakespeare, then something's wrong? That's right. right. Okay. <laughs> it is Shakespeare. Okay. It is Shakespeare, yeah. Check out this poet's former New York brownstone. Host a board game night in the same room where she, and this is a true fact, regularly played competitive boggle games 
Find out for yourself why the caged bird sings. And Maya Angelou. Yes. yes. The author of Murder on the Orient Express may have been a hoarder. Her home is full of a large collection of silverware china and books. Her welcome mat should read, and then there were none. Agatha Christie? Agatha Christie is perfectly correct. And I haven't read a book in like six years. <laughs> no, that's not true. <laughs> this is your last clue. Okay. In Hunter S. Thompson. Sorry, I got too cocky. I got too cocky. <laughs> and that was my fault, and I regret it. And I hope that does not go on my permanent record. Enjoy the magical life of this best-selling British author. Her estate is next to a real-life castle and a whiskey distillery. But why leave the grounds when she's built a recreation of Hagrid's hut where you and Daniel Radcliffe can reminisce? Oh, oh so it's J.K. Rowling? It is! I have never read those books, so I was concerned. Because I thought I was maybe confusing her with the Hobbit Man. <laughs> she gets that was, a lot, I'm sure. Because, no, because I just, I never say her name. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, I love Game of Thrones. <laughs> I know. You felt the heat of the nerd audience, and then you gave them a something a little extra just to let them know it's all going to be okay. I don't, want, out there. I don't want any trouble. I love Game of Thrones. Uh, Natasha, you did fantastic. We can go to Repuzgur Archung, but I know the answer. You got them all right, so you and Sydney both win Ask Me Another Rubik's Cube. Wow. Natasha Leone stars in Orange is the New Black and in the new movies The Intervention, Anti-Birth, and Yoga Hosers. Thank you so much, Natasha. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, it's time to bring back our finalists and crown our big winner. We have Stephanie from Boston, the librarian who does librarian things. And, of course, Brian from Philadelphia, who works at a medical journal that will publish anything. So let's bring back Stephanie and Brian. All right, Puzzle Guru Art Chung, take it away. Stephanie and Brian, your final round is called Sharing Pairing. In this round, every answer is a rhyming pair of words. And the second word is created by changing the first letter of the first word. So, for example, if I said, it's a non-competitive race for charity, you would say, fun run. We're going to play this game like a penalty shootout. You'll each get up to eight questions. The contestant who scores the most points will be our big winner. Your prize is an Ask Me Another Rubik's Cube. And Natasha has provided a copy of her favorite book, You Can't Win, an autobiography by a burglar and hobo named Jack Black. Pretty cool. <laughs> we flipped a coin backstage, and Stephanie is going first. Here we go. Stephanie, it's the date when your employer gives you money or a candy bar? Payday. That's correct. Brian, it's a dance that turns you all about after you put your hand in. Hokey pokey. Correct. Stephanie, it's an obscenely rich person or Garfield? Fat cat. Correct. Brian, the United Kingdom returned this city to China in 1997. Hong Kong. You got it. Stephanie, a 1993 film starring Bette Midler, Kathy Najimy, and Sarah Jessica Parker. Three seconds. Hocus Pocus. Oh, you pulled it out. Well done. Brian, a car accident that doesn't result in major damage, but will still probably jack up your insurance rates. Fender bender. Correct. Stephanie, a stretchy, fruit-flavored candy with a joke in the wrapper. Laffy Taffy. Correct. Brian, it's Ronald Reagan's favorite candy brand. Jelly Belly. Right. Wow. At the halfway point, we are all tied up. Stephanie, a notoriously expensive construction project in Boston. <laughs> um, Three seconds. Uh, I don't have it, though. No, I'm sorry, she doesn't have it. That was the big dig. Oh. All right, Brian, <laughs> it's a grocery store chain with a swine mascot. Piggly Wiggly. Correct. Stephanie, a spring festival that includes a dance around the pole. Uh, May Day. Correct. Brian, when smart people leave a location to seek out better opportunities. Brain drain? That's right. Stephanie, it's a cigarette brand with a London street name. Ooh, I don't seconds. smoke. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. 
Sorry, we were looking for a Pall Mall. All right, Brian, the situation is the score is six to five. If you get this question right, you win. It's a Nabisco cookie brand shaped like a legume. Oh, Nutter Butter. Yeah, that's right. Congratulations. Great match. Congratulations, Brian. You are a big winner. Enjoy your prize. That's our show. Thanks so much for playing for bonus games and stuff that's too hot for radio. Look us up on Facebook and Twitter and subscribe to our podcast. Come see us live or be a contestant. Go to amatickets.org. Ask me and there's puzzle guru is Art Chung. Hey, my name anagrams to Narc Thug. Our house musician is Jonathan Colton. Thou Jolta Cannon. Our puzzles are written by Ashlyn Hatch, Sean Kennedy, Jack Lechner, David Letzler, Adam Markowitz, and senior writer Greg Lightman. Ask me there is produced by Mike Katz of Travis Larchuk, Julia Melfi, Denny Shin, Alejandra Vasquez, and Romel Wood, along with Anya Grunman. We are recorded by Damon Whittemore, Rick Kwan, and Nate Kinsella. Ask Me Another was created by Eric Newsom and Jesse Baker. We'd like to thank our home in Brooklyn, New York, the Bell House. Hot Heel Blues. And our production partner, WNYC. I'm her ripe begonias. Ophira Eisenberg. And this was Ask Me Another from NPR. <laughs> Next time on Ask Me Another, Star Trek actor and social media icon George Takei gives us some badly needed instructions. Apply to wet hair, working into a gentle lather with fingertips. Rinse well. Join me, Ophira Eisenberg, on NPR's Hour of Puzzles, Word Games.